Hi, this is Dean Miller back with another video of the significance of the life of Jesus. This is in Matthew chapter 18, verses 7 through 9 in the NLT Bible. Jesus warns against temptation. What sorrow awaits the world because it tempts people to sin? Temptations are inevitable, but what sorrow awaits a person who does the tempting? So if your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better to enter eternal life without one hand or one foot than to be thrown into eternal fire with both your hands and feet. And if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It's better to have entered eternal life with only one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. So Jesus warns the disciples about the, the way to cause others to sin in the way of temptation. So verse 7 says, What sorrows await the world because it tempts people to sin? Temptations are inevitable. But what sorrows await the person who does the tempting? So in the NIV Bible, it says, in the NLT it says, what sorrow awaits, but in the NIV it says, woe to the world. This means that God's judgment is about to fall. Jesus pronounced impending judgments on the world for the things that cause people to sin. The world is full of temptations for believers, and one day the world will be destroyed and We'll either be saved by Jesus or judged by Jesus. Either way, we're going to have to go in front of Jesus and answer to Jesus. The te temptations of this world do not excuse one's sin. How does the world cause people to skin or sin? There's several ways. With lies. They teach you that you're self-created, that we're self-dependent, self-sustained, and we don't need a Savior. We only have to answer to ourselves. And they say that some sins aren't bad. Some sins are actually good. And there's actually books that are written that says guilt is a bad thing. So people will live a lifestyle of unwillingness to embrace what the Bible says, and they will create a twisted version to fit their agendas or narratives. They'll make up their own things about God just so they don't have to answer to anybody. And this world is full of mostly unbelievers. They stand in opposition to God. The world sees Christianity as worthless or a fairy tale. To get people to believe in something just to make you feel good. So they, they say that the, the Bible ain't nothing but a fairy tale. Just so you believe in something to make you feel good or have a purpose. And that's not true. And then Jesus' second woe or sorrow is pronouncement of impending judgment focused on the corruption of individuals causing someone else to sin. There's two good examples in the Bible of this. is Adam and Eve, Eve eating the fruit from the tree of knowledge and then giving it to Adam helping him to sin or Aaron listening to the people of Israel when they were led out of Egypt while Moses was on the mountain with God getting the commandments they gave him his jewelry and he melted down and made it an idol of a calf for them so this is points where other people cause someone to sin you know children watch and copy our behaviors it's showing someone something that will cause them to do something they wouldn't have done it's kind of like peer, peer pressuring someone into doing something or your children picking up on a bad behavior that we do that causes them to sin. So in verses 8 and 9 it says, So if your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better to enter eternal life with only one hand or one foot than to be thrown into eternal fire with both your hands or feet. And if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better to enter eternal life with only one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. So Jesus uses similar words in Matthew 5, 29, 30, and he uses these words over and over, sometimes to different audiences, sometimes to the same audiences, and at different times to make the same point. The words may differ in Matthew 5, 29, 30, but the message is still the same. And these messages are addressed to the community of believers. Warning is intended to open the eyes of believers concerning the seriousness of stumbling. But the eternal punishment would be carried out on a person who proved by his sin that he had never been a child of God. So we must remove these stumbling blocks that cause us to sin. Does Jesus really mean to actually cut off your hand or gouge out your eye or cut off your feet? Probably not. Jesus is using an exaggeration to make a point. Think about this. If you cut off your right hand because it caused you to sin, couldn't your left hand still cause you to sin? Or if you cut off your feet, couldn't you think of another way to walk over to do another sin or even wheelchair yourself over? And do you still think a blind man could never sin? They could still sin too. And that's because sin comes from the heart. 
It's an internal problem. And Jesus is telling you to cut yourself off from that problem that causes sin. And that cut off is to take up following Jesus and to repent. But for the church, it means that any person, program, or teaching that threatens the spiritual growth, growth of the body must be removed. And as for individuals or relationships, practices, or activities that leads us to sin should be stopped. Jesus says it would be better to go to heaven with one hand than to go to hell with both. And, that's, and it's true. It's, he'd rather you suffer here on earth than suffer eternity in hell. So if, if your right hand is causing a sin, it probably would be better to cut it off. But Jesus don't want you to go out and self-mutilate yourself. He wants you to cut off the sin where it starts and that's in your heart. And in our minds. So some of the key points from this passage is the problem isn't in your hands, it's in your heart. Jesus uses an exaggeration to make a point. But the problem isn't in your hands and feet, it's in your heart. The battle is often at the first look. It could be a beautiful woman, a man... Money, drugs, satisfaction, lust, power, greed, or even envy. But that temptation begins by seeing something you want or desire. And that's where the sin begins. We as humans are never content about what we have in life. And we always want more and desire more. We always think the grass is greener on the other side. We always think, oh, that woman over there might be prettier. and you know, Maybe I'd have a better life with her. But that's not true. So we need to try to cut off these desires that cause us to sin. Nothing is worse, nothing is worth missing out on spending eternity in heaven. James Vernon McGee once said, There's nothing worse than going to hell. But then he said, Something is worse, it's holding the hand of your kids while you're going to hell. Don't cause other people to stumble. You see good people who hang around evil people turn evil. But there's also several instances where a good person will not submit to evil because they have a good foundation of God. So not all people who hang around people turn evil, all good people, but they do have that chance. The best thing to do is just stay away from that kind of stuff. So where do your sins lie? Ask yourself that question. What are your weaknesses? Are your weaknesses causing other people to stumble also? Your kids, your co-workers, or other Christians? And what can you do? The best answer i found is to find Jesus. Believe wholeheartedly that Jesus died on that cross to remove your sins. The Bible is definitely not a fairy tale. All the prophecies, a lot of the prophecies in the Bible came true already, and the rest of them will come true, and Jesus will return. And the world will be judged. All believers and non-believers will have to give an account. And Jesus will be there either as your Savior or as your judge. Jesus is going to deal with sin, and God's wrath will be brought down on the world. Christians are not worthless in this world. They are a restraint built in by God to hold back evil, just like civil, civil governments, family, and your conscience. You know, as we see the world perverting these very things that God has put into place to restrain evil, you know, corrupt governments that are allowing sins and rewarding criminals for doing wrongs to appease the mobs, you know, the government's supposed to be a something that keeps evil from going rampant, keeping these mobs from taking over. They have laws put in place, and they're supposed to protect the, the people who do right. And then you see the breakdown of the nuclear families by divorces and same-sex marriages. And it, it's being done by, by the movies we watch and the teaching curriculums and the it's a change in moral beliefs and finding fault in everything that we do. And that takes down the fourth thing, which is our consciences. So by breaking down the family who is supposed to set that guideline of doing right and living good and going to church and believing in God and teaching your kids morals and to do right and not to lie is being broke down. And then our consciences, which God gives, God gives us the... Ability to know right from wrong. Everyone knows right from wrong. But then we can warp that conscience that God gave us by these things that we watch, our beliefs that we have. You know, we, we twist the scriptures to, you know, fit our agendas and, and say sin is good. 
You know, I don't have to answer anybody. I don't have to answer to God. I can live for myself. And then the the fights and you see the fights in the church. Church is another one. It's the the breakdown of the churches. You know, every day churches are are closing because people are downplaying the importance of fellowship, causing the hundreds of churches to shut down. So there's four things God put in place to restrain evil, and that's governments, families, conscience, and church. And you see a breakdown in that society. And I'll end it here with Isaiah 5.20. It says, What sorrow for those who say that evil is good, and good is evil, that dark is light, and light is dark, and bitter is sweet, and sweet is bitter. Look at the world today. Does that sound like a fairy tale? Because that's what's happening right in front of our eyes. Things that used to be bad are turning good, and things that are good are turning bad. And like one guy said, that whatever we allow this generation will become normal in the next generation. So as we see, there's a lot of things out there that's going to cause believers to stumble or have doubt in God. And that's one thing that we need to not do. We need to stick to the Bible because the Bible will never change. It doesn't change with fads. It doesn't change with the times. You know, everything goes through a cycle. And these, these people think that just because one thing is cool today, 20 years from now, you look back at it and say, that wasn't that cool. So... And we need to be glad that God's never changed, that He never changes, that His Word has always stays true and just. So, Amen. Thank you for listening to my videos. Please subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Like my channel. Uh, like the videos. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think if you like them. And uh, just share the videos. Just hit the share button and share it so other people can watch them too. Maybe we can help spread the word and. And put God back into this country and back in this world where we can start prospering again and instead of headed down the wrong path towards evil. Thank you for listening. Amen.